Hi everyone, welcome to the uh, manual testing and automation basic session uh, by the software testing help team. I'm Swati, I'm going to be the facilitator for these sessions. Um, I'm a computer science engineering graduate and I've been a QA for uh, about 10 years now since 2004. I'm CST and CSQA certified and um, I've been a facilitator for the sessions for about um, a few a few months now, close to a year now, and we've had like over 200 participants uh, who have taken this session already. So today in this demonstration session, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to give you an orientation of the syllabus, the format of these sessions, what all is included, and we'll also take up a test topic to give you an idea of how everyday session goes on. Right? <clears throat> so let's get started with the syllabus. So we'll start with the roadmap of the entire course. Now you all must have seen on the website that this is a five-week class. And we have three days a week. Each day, each day session is two hours. Okay, now um, right now this goes on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific time. So the curriculum of this session, <coughs> since we have um, most of the times our, our students are from, you know, non-IT backgrounds and some of them even though they are from IT background um, you know they they want to, they are beginners to QA and some of our participants have already been QA's for a while but they want to like you know have a, a class which enforces or re you know, reinforces their uh, basics so we have a good mix of all sorts of students in our class so what we do is um, we try to start from the very beginning now we, we try to start from um, topics that will ease our way into the advanced topics very well. So we start with the software development methodologies. Now before I explain this, let me tell you um, who this class is applicable for. Now this is a QA class. So anybody who wants to or needs to learn QA, this class is perfect for you. So if you are a pressure right out of college and if you are looking for um, you know, an entry into IT and if you are interested in QA and want to make an educated guess, as to whether you know um, this is something that you're interested in or not so this class works for you and if you've already been a QA as I said if you want like reinforce your fundamentals um, this class is for you so basically anybody who wants to learn QA um, this class is aimed at them and there are no prerequisites as such um, you know we do not expect you to be an expert in any, anything uh, you know before you get in here so it's not like you know we're looking for um, IT professions or anything so what we are doing here is uh, we have a QA course and we also try to, you know, um, give a glimpse of real-time work that happens in projects so that if you are new to this field, new to this IT field also, it will be a good exposure for all of you. So uh, coming back to the topics, the first week we have the development methodologies. So here we will talk about the different ways in which software is built. So uh, why does software get built? What is a software in the first place? How, what are the steps that go into it? And where does tum, uh, testing come into picture? We'll talk about all that in the first week's topics. So as you can see here, we have the V model, waterfall, agile model, all of these models. So um, the focus here is both the traditional and, you know, um, the more, um, how do I put it? Um, the more recent developments in the software development life cycle. So we, we, are, uh, we have you covered as long as, uh, as far as, you know, everything, all the methodologies are concerned. So um, even though we are going to talk generically about, you know, everything that happens in the development process for a project, the focus still is on QA. So even though we try to learn all the stages, we are much more keenly concentrating on how, uh, you know, uh, software testers play a role what kind of activities do we do? So that's the the focus is still on testing while we are trying to learn, while we are trying to get the entire IT perspective. Starting with two, the again we are going to go uh, much deeper into the 
testing process. So we have the software testing life cycle, uh, the main topic that's going to begin in week two, and that's what we're going to uh, talk about in the next two weeks. So all the uh, everything that is a part of um, you know the testing life cycle, all the inputs that go into it, and all the deliverables that we create, everything is going to be explained. <clears throat> and the focus of this class is uh, strong fundamentals at the same time practical application of the knowledge. So everything, both the theory and the practice is going to go hand in hand. And um, at the end of the first three weeks, we will have um, everything in our hand that we need to know about the QA field with enough practice. Now week four is again something that will be highly beneficial to you in terms of adding skills to your resume. In week four, we're going to take up a uh, incident management tool which is Jira, a defect management tool Bugzilla, a test management tool uh, Qtest. So not only do we provide you a 100% overview of these tools, a walkthrough, we also give you a test ID so you can you know practice working on the tool and gain some skills on it. And in week two comes the automation part as well. Now this class is 100% a manual testing class but we want to introduce you to the aut automation topic as well. The reason is, see, um, especially when I started my career, when somebody told me that a tool will perform testing for me, it, 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 it somehow sounded to be, you know, something that is too good to be true. So for those of you who have never seen automation, you know, really happen, or, you know, if you have never, you know, hands-on worked on creating an automation test, it gets very hard to conceptualize or you know this whole automation concept becomes an abstraction in our heads a, a big black hole that we somehow can't figure out so we want to help our students out in, in cases like that you know, what we do in this class is we'll talk about all the theory that leads up to automation like why do we automate uh, who automates what do you need in order to automate all that you know background information and I will give you an overview how you know I will show you how automation happens with the help of QTP. So to clarify, this class is in no way a QTP class. It's just and making you understand the automation concepts using QTP as a vehicle. That's all. Now week five is going to be um, uh, your career counseling, most of it. So in the class, we'll discuss how to create your resumes, you know, what to include in it, what not to include in it, you know, how, how can you portray your experience in a positive way. If you are from a non-IT field, how do you explain that change? All that we will uh, talk about in the resume session and also the mock interview sessions. So here we'll, we'll uh, discuss, you know, things about what kind of questions you can expect in an interview, how can you answer. See, um, as far as the technical questions go in testing, there are like, you know, multiple resources on the internet. But it's about, you know, answering questions that are relevant to your situation. So that sort of thing we'll take up in um, week five and also the certification guidance. What are the beginner level certifications available? Um, you know, what might be more relevant to you? Again, in my opinion, certifications, no, no certification is a bad certification. So I wouldn't say one is better than the other. Uh, it's just about what would you prefer? It's about personal preference. So I'm going to give out to you all the information about these certifications so you can make a decision as to which one appeals to you better or which one you know, fits what you're looking for in a better way. So that's what we're going to take up in week five. And in week five, we also, you know, uh, keep some buffer time just in case we, you know, uh, miss out on any topics, we can just catch up. In addition to all this, uh, every day session is going to have an assignment so you get to apply the knowledge that you gain uh, in that day's class. We also have a live project. We provide our uh, students with an application that you know you can test and find defects and you know uh, perform all the you know real-time activities via this application. And then there is the bonus study material that every one of our participants receive. So these are some QA ebooks and ISTQB related material, which is a, a great value add if you ask me. Um, <clears throat> Now, yeah, that's basically how the entire curriculum is going to look like. So let's talk about how each day's session goes on. So the way each day's session goes on is uh, we have, uh, we break down our session into two, three parts. One is the vocabulary part. We discuss the main topic. And there is a practical application 
or you know in other words assignment related task now every day session we'll try to do all these three parts vocabulary is because you know um sometimes when we work in a certain field we kind of you know have some words that become common part of our conversations for example you might say when is the build going to get deployed for a newcomer build sounds like what exactly is a build a build is you know a piece of code that is ready to get to you know be installed so those are the kind of words we want to like you know speak the qa language so every day we will try to pick out one or two words again we also give our students a chance to you know bring their own words so we will have that part where we you know uh, get familiarized with the qa language and then there's going to be a main topic which is basically you know any the topic that we are at at that particular day um and then the practical assignment so starting from day 1 there is going to be an assignment every single day so there's a learning curve right from the very beginning of you know uh, the class so that's how every day session is going to be like so even though the session is for 2 hours we will have a main topic for a 1 and 1/2 hour and the last 30 minutes we would like to leave it for q and a because uh, question and answers see um, being an it professional is mostly about communication also so we want to uh, give our participants a good chance to interact with each other and with the facilitator so that we can you know uh, have a brainstorming session instead of this being like a you know um, lecture so the last 30 minutes is usually a question and answer session and after the session ends every day um, the notes that we make during the session uh, which is basically you know um, I when mean, whenever we are discussing a topic I like to like you know jot down few points that seem important and uh, so the running notes and the video recording of every day session is going to be sent out to our participants in an email every single day and these video recordings are going to help you revise the topics if you need to see them one more time you can just go ahead and do that and these recordings are available for our participants for a period of 12 months so um that's basically um, a bag a little bit of background information about the class so yeah there is going to be a vocabulary there is going to be a main topic there is going to be a practical assignment in addition to all this our students can have set up one on one sessions with us now these sessions would be about your resumes so we have a generic resume class you know um, uh, um, you know um, uh, one day in the class we discuss about the resume but that's not all you can you know make your resume send it to us we will revise it or give you it make changes and you know unless you have a, un, until you have a perfect resume we can you know go back and forth on it and fix it and you know uh, make it work for you and similarly if you have an interview you can give us a call and we guide our students that sort of stuff so um apart from all the stuff that happens in class we have one on one sessions also with our students of course we need to uh, schedule them early on and things like that but we do make that happen as well so um that's about our uh, you know classes in general now today i'm going to take up a topic and you know give you a brief idea of how the topics are going to be dealt with in the class so this is going to take like 5 to 6 minutes and um, you know uh, we'll take up the test planning topic um again this is only going to be an introduction um so let's get started now we were talking about the stlc right so stlc stands for software test life cycle so this is about how a qa qa stands for quality assurance now whenever you say testing it's all about you know finding defects but that's not all what testers do correct as testers we not only find defects we do activities that help in defect prevention so basically since we are so much more than just identifying defects when they occur we are also about you know making sure that they don't occur in the first place uh qa we call ourselves qas which is because we do both um defect prevention and defect identification so mm -hmm, that's what i mean by you know qa every time i call us the qa team so in the software testing life cycle you can say that there are 
the main you know uh, activities we can just break it down into three stages one is the test planning um, test designing and test execution see say you have an web page in that there are like 20 elements or you know 20 components or 20 items in it now if you some components are related to each other say for example um, there is a month day year each one is a different field correct you have a choice to choose month you have a choice to um, choose day you have an option to choose the year now all of these three fields they contribute to the date of birth field as a collective you know one part field now for us to test the date of birth you know for a part of it you will have to test each of these you know elements individually and what they constitute you know as collectively so it's not only about like you know checking if it, whether things are existing or whether you know you are able to make a choice or not that doesn't you know that's not only the extent of testing you will have to plan you will have to understand the rules. You will have to like, you know, come up with intelligent situations to test. Only then will the testing activity be successful, correct? So in order for you, for us to do all that, we will have to first understand the application really well. We will have to understand the logic, you know, based on which things are going to be, um, um, things are going to get processed and stuff like that. So it's very important for us to understand the logic. So testing does not mean that you have an application and you just, you know, work on it and find defects. This is not how it goes. As testers, we have to, you know, plan diligently, um, you know, apply that plan or, you know, or use that plan to create our tests and eventually test the application. Only then will, you, will we be able to um, test correctly, identify the maximum defect and provide value as testers. So basically, test plan is the one of the first things that happen in a project. And the reason is because testing is not only about coming at the end, pushing some buttons and finding problems. It's a structured act activity that, that really has to be controlled or managed in a way that the results are always consistent and effective. So basically, test planning is one of the first activities. Now, every activity that we discuss in class, uh, or this basically the whole test planning is a process. Now, any time we discuss a plan, we try to talk about what is the input, who are the actors, and what's expected at the end of it. So, at least these three components. In addition to that, we'll discuss what each process is, when does this happen, uh, how does this happen, and if anything else is relevant, we'll discuss all that. So, for that, let me get an Excel sheet and start writing down the test planning process details. So as we talked about, we are going to come up with an input, output, what is it, who does it, in other words, actors. When does this happen and stuff like that. Now, test planning is the first step, correct? So when in the sense, this is the first step of the software testing lab socket. Who, this is an activity that is um, led or driven by the QA lead. Now, and but then this is in no way an independent activity. This has to be something that the QA team members are going to participate or provide their inputs. So I'll explain that in a little bit. The input for this step is basically the project plan because the overall project plan will tell you when the project is going to start, when is it going to end, when is the QFA is going to start. So one of the primary uh, places from which we can, you know, draw our outcome and think about uh, what to include in our test plan, especially when it comes to date, number of people, that sort of stuff, we will always get with the project plan. In addition to that, we refer the FRD document, which is the functional requirement document. This is to understand the scope of testing. See, you, we, we have to know how much, uh, you know, how much is the extent of the application. Say, for example, 
uh, there is an application that has that runs 10 web pages and has probably you know 150 features that are implemented on it so you need to know the size of the application the complexity of it you need to do some sort of analysis to come up with how much time it's going to take for us to test so this sort of analysis it you know um, see if there was a previous application that you tested or you know that as a team you all handled that it had like 10 web pages and sort of you know something similar to uh, you know something uh, a number of features that's close to 150 features the complex so basically this is the this is a previous version correct so this is some history you know uh, you've had in testing similar applications so that sort of experience plus you know um, understanding of the current situation is going to help us plan <coughs> better in the test planning phase since test plan now the output of the test planning phase is the test plan document this is typically a word document again that's not um, a standard but uh, most of the cases this is a word document that runs over 25 to 30 pages and has all the information that you would require um, in order to decide how the testing is going to go on now what this process is so this document is a sort of blueprint a sort of map that's going to tell us how to go ahead and test the uh, application now if this is a document that's very important you cannot have it like you know um, being updated by everybody at the same time or you know um, anybody who has access to it so test plan is a document whose integrity is very important for the success of the project that's why it's a document that is made accessible uh, to on, I mean uh, for editing only to the QLE so this is an activity that's predominantly led by the QLE uh, because it's very very important to have this correct to get this correct right and the QA team members are going to participate and provide their inputs in this activity now the test plan will contain information about what are we going to do well, this probably is more relevant in this section who are going to be involved So what are we going to test is, in other words, the scope of the testing project. Who are going to be involved? The people part of it. When is the testing going to happen? So in other words, the schedules. How is the testing going to happen? So when I say how, um, it means uh, how how would you create the test cases uh, would you use an automation tool or not so how in the sense in this section you can talk about the um, deliverables like are you going to base your testing on test cases or are you going to be basing your test cases on you know uh, creating an automation test script if yes what is the naming convention that sort of stuff um, this will also have information on um, what is the output that you're going to generate at each phase, how you are going to communicate with each other in the team, uh, you know, and what are the roles and responsibilities of the team members, and um, how if you have, uh, you know, uh, if there are any tools that you're going to use, what is that, what kind of data are you going to provide for your testing, um, what kind of, um, um, say, if you had, if you, identify defects how to deal with them so the defect management process is put into your test plan and then if there are any risks that your project might run into those risks are um, you know listed and how to handle the risks that plan is also made in, uh, a part of the, uh, a part of the test plan and then see uh, in you know given the time you we would test it we would test the product until we find all the defects correct but um, it's it's something that cannot go on forever so you, when the time is limited and you know uh, when you have so much to do you will have to come up with a situation on when to stop testing see even today if you have like if you go to like any of these popular sites like amazon.com any of those live sites if you sit down and test for probably you know a few months at a time we are still going to find one or the other defects because you know no software is perfect 
So, but then is it really worth it to sit that much time to find that one defect or to send the product into production is always going to be the question. So a test plan is going to talk about when to stop testing as well. So here we would also have information on the exit criteria. So when the testing is going to happen in the schedules, in addition to this, you will also uh, ha have information about the entry criteria, which means when to start testing, you will also have a when to stop testing, the environment in which the testing is going to happen, um, and if there are any reports or metrics that you are going to collect, that information is going to also going to be a part of the test plan. So basically these are all the constituents of a test plan. Now for some reason this is also an important question they'll ask you what, what should the test plan be. Sometimes the question could be in the form of uh, what, what is the table of contents for your test plan. So they are looking at what are the components of the test plan. So uh, briefly these are the components of your test plan. Another interview question that comes with you know test plan, uh, the, the topic of test planning is um, what is the difference between a test plan and test strategy? Now, as you can see from this, the constituents of the test plan, half of them are managerial uh, stuff, like who are the people, what are the schedules, and stuff like that, the roles and responsibilities. So let me just you know, use a different color to point out the managerial parts of it. But some are very specific to the application that we are testing, like the scope, uh, how are we going to test, okay, the tools, the data, the defects. So all of these are specific to the application that you're testing. So anytime you're trying to come up with a plan that is technical in nature and that you are going to concentrate on the application um, being the major focus, those parts of your test plan become your test strategy. So you can say that a test strategy is a subset of your test plan. Test plan will have managerial plus technical information. In other words, managerial in the sense this is project related, technical in the sense this is application or the software related. So all the parts that are you know specific to the application or the technical information related uh, information, uh, this is this becomes the test strategy. So in the class, we would discuss about entry criteria in detail. We would discuss about functional requirement document and understanding the scope of it in detail. And um, the deliverables in detail, risks, risk management, uh, that part in detail, exit criteria. So all of that is going to be discussed in detail in the class. In, in, detail in, the class. Um, in addition to that, we'll also take a look at a real-time test plan document to get a good understanding of this. So. Um, I hope that gives you a good idea of how day-to-day -day classes go on and um, I hope this demonstration will help you make a decision on whether this class is right for you or, or not. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.